What's up, college football fans and Mean Green fans? Sonoy Valencia here once again with the Mean Green Show. Tonight, joined by Jared Kalmus, and we are going to get into UTSA's really um, kind of a record-breaking signing class for this 22 class and, and uh, you know, dive in a little bit to that. But, Jared, you know, thank you so much for coming on. I know you're a, a very wanted man being back into the uh, – uh, back back in the saddle here and probably a yeah. lot of people asking you to come on their, their thing and I appreciate you coming on mine but you know where can everybody find you Ed and you know just kind of uh, you know what do you got going on right now yeah definitely so obviously uh, I have my Twitter handle here on my little uh, what do you call that bio or, or I don't whatever. know, <laughs> little, I don't know. Yeah. little box yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I'm like painfully active on Twitter way more than I should be uh, most of my content is on the Alabama Audible podcast uh, we have a Patreon as well um and so be sure to follow at Alamo Audible, uh, all kinds of stuff over there. Also contribute to Underdog Dynasty as well. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, even if you're a North Texas fan, uh, I'm going to do my best to remember to put the link in the bio for Adrian uh, and Javi, right? They were the two that uh, covered the 22 class a little bit more in depth. So if yeah. you guys you know, want to get a little bit more scoop and a little more intel on what UTSA has got going on, be sure to check them out. And all, thing that, all things that they're doing over at Alamo Audible, it's really, really great college football content especially for g5 football but anyway so kind of talking about defense first man um I, and I, I butcher some of these names just correct me if you know the correct pronunciation sure. but there's um, there's one already that you're gonna slip up on because yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure <laughs> um so zaquan frazier mm-hmm. and number one recruit in school history coming out of um coffeeville juco kid uh, was have has a long list of really really good offers was committed i think he flirted with you guys maybe committed or i'm not sure if that but you you can kind of fill me in there but then ultimately was committed to kentucky then decommits and you guys get him back Mm -hmm. so what what's the feel on him i mean this is this guy is he coming in day one in the fans are looking for him to start yeah, well, first off, you pronounce his name right. So really, I had it wrong for so long because it looks it looks like Zaquan, right? Yeah. At least that's the way that I read it. But yeah, Zay, he goes by Zay. Um, yeah, crazy recruiting cycle. At, at least you know the bits and pieces that you know the insiders here and and the public hears and all that. You know who have, who even knows what happens behind closed doors. So Frazier was considered like a UTSA lean for a while. He was one of the top uh, cornerbacks in in junior college football and. It, it kind of was expected that he was going to commit to UTSA and sign on signing day. And then I think like a day, no, I actually, he didn't commit anywhere. He just signed with Kentucky on, on national signing day. Right. Um, and then he actually got to campus in Lexington and I think it was like 10 degrees and snowing, right? Like miserable weather. <laughs> and he just, he asked out of his uh, NLI uh, national letter of intent. Mm-hmm. and Tennessee granted them that or sorry Kentucky granted them that uh and it's not even like they didn't want him they didn't need him like they had other guys in position because like you go read their fan message boards and they're freaking out they're like you know we, they needed a lot of cornerbacks um so it, it's definitely not something that you see happen all that often for for any any school to have a guy come out of his um you know agreement or whatever and end up somewhere else but for Frazier, specifically to go from an SEC school to, uh, you know, an 11, 12-year-old G5 program, I mean, that's, that's really unprecedented. But I think that a lot of that was just his relationship with the coaching staff. They had recruited him really hard for a really long time. You know, uh, Kentucky kind of came in like the last month and put the full court press on him. So I think that he just felt a little bit more comfortable with the coaching staff at UTSA. And, I mean, like you were kind of alluding to earlier, obviously he's going to come in and, and play right away for UTSA. Um, you know, Tariq Woolen is looking to go the second, third round in the NFL draft this year coming out of UTSA. And Frazier is kind of that same type of cornerback. You know, he's like six foot four, speedy, really athletic, but still like a little bit raw as a corner. So I think like the coaches were kind of pointing to Woolen saying, look, like we coach this guy up to be a draft pick. We can do the same for you. Um, and obviously with Woolen going into the draft, there's going to be plenty of playing time to be had at that quarterback position. So, yeah, it would definitely be interesting to see how it does. You know, not, not even close. He's by far the best recruit he's ever, ever signed. Okay, so I didn't know. Literally, when when you teed off and said he was on campus in Kentucky, yeah. I had I I had no idea that was the case. I thought he would just verbal to them and was still at his junior college. What in the transfer portal hell? So he showed up, maybe started, to, maybe did a few workouts, and then he was like, "Nope," and then like, and then yeah. essentially, so is he at Kentucky still? 
So I so I'm still kind of unsure about the logistics, <laughs> right? I think that he's not yeah at Kentucky or UTSA yeah. right now. Yeah, I, I think that he's going to sit out a semester essentially. Okay, so he'll like retain eligibility or whatever because I think like once you enroll uh, at a school, you have you, you can't go to another one. Like the eligibility yeah. stuff, it, it gets really tricky. Um, but yeah, I mean, he should be there in the summertime. I don't, I don't think he's gonna be there for spring ball. Yeah. Um, cause like he started at Kentucky, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's crazy. It's, it's really unprecedented. So Man, recruiting is getting crazier and crazier by yeah, like really the is. month I feel like. And obviously with, you know, it, it seemed like transfer portal kids, once you got a transfer portal kid kind of quote unquote committed, it's like, okay, that's a done deal. And now you're seeing transfer transfer yeah. portal kids flip and she's like dude this yeah. is too much like well, it, it's funny because when you think of guys flipping their commitments you're just like oh like they're a 17 year old kid and like yeah. under pressure but like the transfer portal guys they've been through it once or twice already yeah, yeah and, and it still happens so uh, you know it's, the game has changed and and you yeah. never stop recruiting you know i think that's, yeah. that's the message that's crazy well i uh, i mean that's insane. We could, I, I could literally talk for 30 minutes just about that, but we'll, we'll move on. That, that blew my mind. Uh, I wish you would have told me that pre-tape, but anyway, very ne nevertheless, huge pickup for UTSA and uh, yeah, just really, really great recruiting and kind of staying on, on Frazier for a, a little bit more. I feel like that makes sense though. I mean, obviously SEC is by far the best conference. N no, no debate there. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but the, you know, Kentucky is middle of the pack there. He's yeah. going to come down to a G5 that is presumably on the rise here. And, you, you know, why? I, I feel like it makes sense. Like, you know. I think Kentucky lost their defensive coordinator as well. Like, in that period between when he signed and when he showed up to campus, like, within that couple, like, two-week span or whatever, I think they had some coaching turnover. So, like, there's there's that part of it as well. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to move on. Okay. So, going down to Owen uh Payway, Pee Wee, Pee Wee, yeah. Pee -wee. Okay, okay. So linebacker, really highly rated. Twenty four seven's got it, got him at an eighty seven. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so what's your thoughts on Owen coming out of Cypress, Texas? Man, honestly, even though he's the second highest rated recruit in this class, I still think he's a little bit underrated because when you look at his twenty four seven composite, Rivals didn't give him a high rating at all. Like twenty four seven, I think rated him as a four star, um, and Rivals has him like as a low three. Uh, but he's a guy who had a lot of power five offers and he was getting recruited really hard. And he, like when you watch his film, he just has that natural like kind of twitch speed. Like his acceleration is really fast. Uh, some of the people watching this might remember Clarence Hicks at UTSA. It just felt like he got off the ball so fast. And I think that's how Pee Wee is as well. You know, Pee Wee is a little bit on the on the slider side. I don't know if he'll grow to be as big as Hicks, but he's going to be a beast in coverage, I think. And it, it just depends how he feels out you know, his, his body. Cause he is a little bit slender, but yeah, just mm -hmm. um, the type of speed that you really can't teach at that size. So. Yeah. And not that red shirting, I think red shirting is a great thing personally, mm -hmm. especially now with being able to play four games, just another, another year to try to go to the league or another year of free education. And you don't yeah. have to take advantage. I think red shirting is great. However, I mean, so I don't mean this as a derogatory term, but being, you know, that, you know, the kind of player that Owen is, do you think he dodges his red shirt his, as a true freshman out of high school? I think there's a chance, right? Um, UTSA did take a couple of transfers at that outside linebacker position that he's projected to play at. Um, so I think like the writing's probably on the wall that he'll probably red shirt. He'll probably want a red shirt. I would think so. If he could mm -hmm. get up to like 225, I, I think that'd be really good for him. Uh, but, you know, he might be too good to keep up the field. So it's, it's yeah. hard to say. You never know. I mean, they could have promised him playing time as a freshman. But mm -hmm. um, I could see it go either way. But hopefully they won't have to rush him on the field if he's not ready because they do have some depth at that position still. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of makes you think, though, with, um, you know, the transfer portal. I mean, if kids – and I hate to see a true freshman transfer just because I think – regard, even if even if my school is the beneficiary of that transfer, I just think mm -hmm. by, or unbiasedly speaking, you should – Give it two ish, at least two years, if not three. You, you know what I mean? Don't just go after one red shirt, but not just UTSA, but uh, you can't help but think or some of these schools, like again, hey, promising playing time or something. And then if they, yep. these true freshmen don't get it, I, I just don't want to see them transfer too, too early, is what I'm, what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. Definitely. But kind of a little interesting tidbit. So four of UTSA's top 10 recruits ever are actually in this 22 class, number one being. Uh, Zaquan Frazier and number two being Owen Peewee. So uh, that's pretty amazing and probably pretty exciting for you as a UTSA fan, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, kind of going down on the line here, staying on the defensive side of the ball, Caleb Brown, another linebacker coming out of Austin or uh, LBJ high school, right? 
Yeah, that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> I think state runner up this year. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, so yeah, again, another linebacker, you know, that you guys are getting, and you feel like you guys are really targeting that position. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, four guys that position graduated this year. So you just had a ton of seniors last year, but they really got hit hard at that outside linebacker position. So it was definitely like a really a keen focus, both at the high school and transfer level, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, kind of staying staying uh, true to the defense side of the ball once again. This is honestly, this is kind of my, like, sleeper pick for you guys, I guess you could say. But uh, Cameron Cooper, you know, the edge rusher out of Dayton, Texas. I, man, I've, I, you guys won him over, oh, that was the SMU battle, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. Big, first time you say he's, legitimately beat out SME for recruit in a long yeah. time, like many, many years. Yeah. And uh, he's yeah, actually going to start it. Oh, uh, he's actually going to start his career at tight end. There's a really? chance he could end up on defense, but they like him at tight end. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh? Didn't know that. It's kind of surprising, but he's got a couple plays on his film that he yeah. kind of contorts his ball. Downfield, yeah. Or, sorry. You know, I, I saw, I've, I've yeah. seen his, his offensive uh, highlights and I thought, you know, but I just thought he was going to come in and play defense, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. maybe he's he will, kind of, but yeah. Yeah. He's kind of like, what was uh, his name out of Denton Ryan like two years or maybe a year ago? The I'm blanking on his name. Five-star guy. Um, he went yeah, to Texas. Uh, Jordan Humphrey. Maybe offense and defense. I think so. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He kind of, yeah. He kind of yeah, reminds yeah. me of a, I mean, you know, kind of a, a G5, you know, player, mm-hmm. you know, like him, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think, I think, you know, there's a lot of potential there, especially if they're considering him both ways. Um, all right, moving down to Ty Leonard coming out of North Shore Powerhouse School, obviously out of Houston. Mm-hmm. And, you know, D-line, what are your thoughts on Ty? Well, so another state champion, right? I think that mm-hmm. was a big focus in his class at the high school level. And, and Coach Trailer even mentioned when he came into UTSA, he asked the whole team, you know, how, raise your hand if you played or won in a state championship game. And he was expecting like half the room to raise their hand. And I think it was only like four or five guys. So they're definitely going after guys that have that championship pedigree, which uh, I think is a smart move, especially, you know, within the state of Texas. Um, so Leonard is a guy, like, I don't know if he has, like, the ceiling to be, like, an NFL-level defensive end, but I think his floor is really low. Mm-hmm. Or, sorry, it's really high, rather. So, like, I see him, like, at worst being, like, really great depth. Like, he's got that great size, does a good job fighting off blocks. Um, I think he's going to end up similar to, like, Lorenzo Danzler at UTSA, where he mm-hmm. was never, like, an all-conference guy. But he was always like right on that bubble and he was just mm-hmm. super defendable. He got the job done and he was like never the reason why a play went in a bad direction. And that, that's kind of the way that I see Leonard. Right. And, you know, obviously, like what you do in high school doesn't matter once you get to college, mm-hmm. obviously. But so that's not what I'm trying to say here. But however, I mean, if you come from a winning program and you're used to winning and especially winning the ultimate here in Texas, you know, yeah. the high school football state championship, I do feel like. I didn't get to win any, but my partner I teach PE with, he has two with Trinity, so he can kind of attest to this. We talk about it from time to time while we're, mm. all the kids are playing dodgeball. But, yeah. you know, I, I feel like they kind of walk in with a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, not cockiness, but just kind of like, all right, like, I know I know what winning looks like. And yeah, I, it's you, a mindset. I, mean, I, yeah, I think it's a positive energy they bring and, and a positive way that they can carry themselves. You know, if, if it's used the right way, again, you don't want to, you know, mm-hmm. rest on your high school accolades, obviously, but. Um, but yeah, I think I think anytime you get a state championship guy, you know, and that's it's never a bad thing, you know. So that's interesting. Very cool. All right, <clears throat> down to Zach Cossey, uh out of Jones College, right out of Mississippi. And so, what are you, what are your thoughts on on this guy? So, I mean, he's he's a JUCO kid. JUCO isn't really what it used to be. I mean, I, I have a lot of respect mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. kids that make it out of JUCO nowadays because it's just like. Uh, they're they're going to get obviously transfer portal and high school. Which I feel like it's really yeah. really hard. But so, how do you view view Ju- JUCO kids now? I know Zaquan's a little bit different, being so highly rated. But you know, Zach Cosy, kind of more of the standard pickup for a G five school. I mean, yeah. is this someone you think is going to be one too deep, or could he potentially start? I mean, what are you, what are your thoughts with him? So I don't know if he'll be one or two deep this year because UTSA has a ton of depth on the defensive line for sure, like several all conference players. But I think eventually down the road he can start. I'm mm-hmm. really high on him. I think he's kind of a hidden gem. You know, he wasn't recruited that highly. Uh, but one of those guys, when you turn the film on, and within a couple of plays, you're just like, oh, he has it. You know, he's super active. He's really dynamic. Um, so I think he was under-recruited. And, you know, to your point about Juco not being what it used to be, I think, like, there's more opportunity at the Juco level uh, for, from the evaluation side. And I think we're seeing that at UTEP, right? I think UTEP's finding a lot of guys that have fallen through the cracks 
because other schools are rec recruiting the transfer portal harder than they used to recruit at the JUCO level. So I think Causey could be one of those dudes. You know, I think he's really athletic for his size, and you know, he's he can be, a, I think, a real difference maker. It might take him a year because, like I said, there's a lot of dudes in front of him that are are really good. Um, but I actually think there's a lot of opportunity for schools to to go in and, and grab some guys in a JUCO that the bigger P5 schools are not noticing because they're chasing after a lot of those transfer porter guys. Absolutely. Kind of <clears throat> similar, similar, uh, similar mold here with Chase Davis, defensive lineman coming out of East Los Angeles college. And yeah, I mean, going to get a Juco kid out of, out of LA, out of California. That's yeah. yeah, it's, and, uh, yeah. Uh, David Davis is actually a D one bounce back. He signed with, I think Nevada out of high school. Okay. And I think he was there for like a year. Yeah. So what, what, are, what are your expectations for him? Um, so I'm not quite as high on him as I am with Cossie. I do think that Davis has a lot of potential to be really good because he's got really long, lanky arms, but he doesn't look like, um, I guess I should just say he has a really long wingspan, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like 6'5", but his arms are, are even longer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's got, he could bat down a lot of balls at the line of scrimmage. And obviously, like, he's got athleticism to sign D1 out of high school like that. Um, I'm not sure what drove him to Juco, if it was playing time or a coaching change or what. Um, but I think he has, like, if he puts it all together, I think he could be better than Causey. Uh, I think he'll play different positions, though. I see Causey playing nose tackle and Davis playing defensive end slash defensive tackle. Um, so I see those guys actually complementing each other quite a bit. Yeah. All right, moving over to the offensive side of the ball. Another top 10 all-time signee and right out of North Texas' backyard, Jace Wilson out of Denton Geyer. I yeah. got the opportunity to see him play in person, and, yeah, he's – He's real. Like, he's the real deal. I think he's – I mean, I think he's yeah, phenomenal, Yeah, UNT honestly. didn't even offer him, right? Uh, I don't even want to look. <laughs> I don't think they did. Oh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't I'm going to have to cut – if you know how to cut it out, I cut it out. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. So very, 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 I think, great pickup for UTSA. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've, again, seen him in person. He's He looks better in person than he does in, on film, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. That's good Not that he doesn't look good on film, but yeah. um, so anyway, what's your thoughts with Jace? I mean, you think again, kind of same question as earlier. You think he might dodge the red shirt? I, I mean, kind of kind of harder to do maybe at wide receiver, but yeah, exactly. You know, and UTSA is like really stacked at wide receiver. They're bringing mm -hmm. back, I think, their top four or five pass catchers mm -hmm. from last year. Um, so I think for him, I, I think he's going to get in. He's going to recognize that he's going to be behind like probably two or three guys that are going to go in the league. So I hope he kind of embraces that and like learns from their leadership. Um, it, in fact, UTSA has another guy that I've kind of been expecting to break up for a while. Isaiah Davis that hasn't got his shot yet just because that room is so stacked. So I'll be like a little bit surprised if Wilson does make the field this year. I think he'll probably get his three or four games or whatever to like keep his red shirt. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it would be a pretty catastrophic event if Wilson becomes like a featured receiver just because like there's so much in front of him. But obviously, man, the sky's the limit for this guy. Yeah, definitely. All right, <clears throat> Vinley Tatufu. So, kind of building a little bit of a Polynesian pipeline from yeah, independence with with Maka and then now Tatufu. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this guy. I mean, he's again pretty good pickup. So, what what are your thoughts yeah. for uh, for Tatufu? Yeah, it, it's funny. Whenever he got to campus, there was a video of of him and um and uh. Maka working yeah. out next to each other. And it was like the Polynesian Bash brothers. Like they're yeah. just like huge dudes, like moving all this heavyweight. That was yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, but I, I think he's a little bit different in the sense that he's a lot more of a road grader, right? Like I think he's a guy that's just gonna like just bulldoze guys, right? Mm -hmm. He's not quite as athletic, I don't think. Um, not as great, like out in space and, and getting to the next level and stuff. But I think that if he can just get that initial push, you know, his two or three yards up the field on the run plays, like that'll be critical for you to say. And um They've just had so much shuffling on the offensive line that I think like the depth there is going to be huge. So we'll see what he can do. You know, I'm not sure if he's going to come in and compete for a starting job right away, but I think that he just has the pure raw strength to to be a factor on the offensive line if he were to come in. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so down to Ty Edwards, running back out of Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, and obviously losing a, a you know all world player in, in sincere McCormick. Remind me the, his his backup's name again. Brendan Brady. Yeah, yeah, I guess he was he was a primary backup this year, right? Yeah. So, is presuming he's going to be the starter next year? Well, that's kind of up in the air. So, I I've I've heard both directions from people that could be in the know that Brady is coming back or he's not coming back cuz he, he, he has been... a super senior season left to use. Oh, okay. Should he choose. And yeah. there's been some cryptic tweets out there 
Yeah. There's been some cryptic Instagram messages. I don't think that he's like working out with the team right now. Okay. It's not that I've seen. Yeah. But I think there is still a chance that Brady will come back. Okay. Either way, I think Ty Edwards is going to be in the mix. Uh, he's a little bit different type of back than UTSA's had in recent mm-hmm. years because uh, he's big. He's like six foot two, right? Yeah. Both yeah. Before, uh, since McCormick and Brady were on the two thirty two as well. Yeah. He he's he's a unit for sure. He's, yeah. He's more of a tank than a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. A smaller artillery unit. Than a smaller tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, that'll be interesting. Um, I don't know. It's like I feel like UTSA's bigger backs haven't panned out historically, but mm-hmm. Edwards is so much high, more highly rated as a recruit, mm-hmm. um, and other schools just wanted him, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, I think as long as the offensive line's good, I don't think it really matters who, too much who's taking the handoffs, right? The offensive line gets the job done. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Edwards is definitely a high ceiling guy. I'm just I'm not sure what that position is going to look like this year at all. Mm-hmm. To be frank with you, yeah. All right, Houston Thomas, tight end coming out of College Station. So, you know, what do you thought? I mean, I, you know, I, I feel like the G5, I, I don't know, maybe probably everywhere. I feel like tight ends just kind of get lost in the shuffle. Maybe maybe you don't feel the same way, but like what? I don't know. I just feel like so many tight ends don't ever I, – I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say here, but like don't mm-hmm. get the, the recognition or it just doesn't pan out the way you, you think it might. And we see like these tight ends being used in the NFL and we think, oh, mm-hmm. why can't it just translate down? Or maybe it's just – Underutilized in some offensive mm-hmm. schemes, but and, and what, what are your thoughts with Thomas? I mean, you think he's you know think he might be different for the for the tight end position? What are your what are your thoughts there? Yeah, so the way that UTSA used tight ends last year was really interesting. Sometimes they played with like two heavy set tight ends, and it was mm-hmm. essentially like having two extra offensive tackles on the field. Um, but there was a freshman Dan Dishman they brought in sometimes, and he was very similar to Houston Thomas, where he's a little bit skinnier. Um, and he can actually stretch the field. And that guy was able to get open and make some pretty big plays. He got hurt a couple times, so they couldn't really use him to the full effect. But you could kind of see that you got the sense that that was UTSA's vision for the tight end position. You have like the one inline blocker who can really set the edge, and then that kind of more hybrid uh, tight end that'll play in the slot, right? And I think that's where Houston Thomas fits in, another guy that went to a state championship game. Um, so I, you know, his production at high school level was really great. So I think it's going to come down to scheme uh, with Thomas. Like can UTSA put him in the position to succeed? And you know, based on what we saw last year, it seems like that should be the case. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how he develops. I think he could be like a, one of the more underrated players in this class when it's all said and done. Yeah, yeah, very cool. That's always always good. All right, so Ben Rios, local kid, San Antonio, coming out mm-hmm. of Central Catholic. So, I mean that. I mean. We like it as North Texas fans whenever we get a Denton kid, you yeah, know, extremely Are backyard sure? local. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, is the feeling the same for UTSA? Is it a little bit more like, all right, like a little extra love for Ben Rios just being that he is a, a, a local San Antonian? It's yeah. San Anto- is that what you guys call yourself, San Antonians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no, definitely. I, I think especially for the offensive line position, right? Like, man, if you could get a local – offensive lineman it just feels like such a bigger win because those guys that have the size are they're always going to be found right it's mm-hmm. easy to go in a database and look up you know who are the six foot six offensive linemen in the state of texas right um so to keep those guys in town is huge it's a huge focus for you to say i mean that long term that's the key to UTSA success is locking down you know that high three-star even even getting into some four-star talent in san antonio like if they do that they'll be fine um so i think rios is a step in the right direction for that you know, I think that he's got some growing to do. Obviously, I don't think he's ready to step in as a true freshman to play right away, as very few offensive linemen are. Uh, but he was actually selected for the All-American Bowl here in San Antonio. So that's a, a huge endorsement that, you know, he got like that local selection. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to play because he tested positive for COVID right before mm-hmm. the game. Um, but, you know, I think he's got, he's got a really high ceiling. If, he's, if his body physically matures the way that we hope that it will, uh, he should be a multi-year starter at offensive tackle for sure. All right, going to group these next two together. Mm-hmm. Brandon Tennyson as well as Diego Tello. Mm-hmm. And both QBs. Um, yep. Going to kind of talk out of both sides of my mouth here. I like Brandon. Even though Brandon's listening at 5'10", we had a 5'10 quarterback. that was pretty good. It made some fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of like him, man. Like, I think he's a little underrated yep. um, personally, maybe just because of his size. But I think I, I, out of the two, I like him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say I, I am a little surprised that you guys didn't land, and, and we'll talk maybe after. Maybe you have some add as far as like what's left, but I'm surprised there wasn't a, a you know, for lack of a better term, a better pickup at, at the quarterback position mm-hmm. just because of the success. And and um, were did you share any of the same surprise? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. A and then B. How do you feel about these guys? 
Yeah, so I, I you got to keep in mind that both of these guys committed really early, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, everyone thought UTSA was going to have a pretty good year. No one imagined that they would win 12 games, right? And they accomplished all the things they accomplished. So I think maybe the story is a little bit different if UTSA didn't have a quarterback commit until September or October or whatever. Um, maybe they would get a higher-rated guy. But I think there's potential with both of these guys for sure. Uh, I think with Tennyson, you know, he's an absolute gamer, right? Like he doesn't have predictable pro style pocket passing presence at, at his size, uh, but his production is crazy. He's put up crazy numbers at Gilmer. Um, I think that he had a knee injury. There was a picture of him on, in a huge knee brace. So hopefully that's nothing major. I guess we'll have to see. Um, and then with Tello, he barely played his senior year. But his junior year, he got voted to be the all-conference quarterback. And, like, that's a pretty good conf- – or, sorry, uh, an all-district quarterback. And that's a pretty mm-hmm. good district he's in um, there in Austin, right? So he beat mm-hmm. out a lot of, a lot of you know, Division One caliber quarterbacks to get that honor. It's just, like, we don't really have enough film on Tello to really be able to honestly assess him. So I think both those guys have some question marks to them. I, I think you have a fair point that you would expect kind of a splashier name um, at, at quarterback, you know, for the type of season UTSA had, but UTSA is really loyal. Like they're going to stick with the guys that, that they commit, especially the quarterback position. Um, so I think both of these guys have some upside and we'll just have to see how it pans out. Yeah. And I feel like with quarterbacks specifically with the new transfer portal, I feel like it's just probably whoever any team gets as a true freshman of high school, just high chance people are going to transfer. Right. Like, I mean, it's just yeah. such a, you know, and I don't blame them. Like that's maybe one position. If you after your freshman year, I kind of understand. If you just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, see the the way the landscape's falling out, and you don't see yourself in the mix for quite a long time, and you want to play, then I I don't I don't really fault the QBs for trying to go to play personally. Yeah, but you look at the guy UTC has committed a quarterback for the twenty three class. It's like, that's clearly a different level of yes. quarterback. You know, so the competition there is yes. going to be crazy for sure. <laughs> Yeah, selfishly, I'm hoping you guys take a dip and he goes somewhere else. But yeah, he is scary. Uh, yeah. I would be sure. surprised to see him go P5, even though he's yeah. Gonna, he's I honestly say, though, yeah. as weird as it may sound, I don't want him to go P5. Like I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. Like never, I, I am like, yeah, I think it's really cool that, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but um, but yeah, he probably might scare some people off if he stays. So. Yeah. Um, all right, kind of going down to the transfers now. Chris Carpenter coming out of Colorado. I haven't really checked on on much of the transfers. So I don't know if he was a guy, you know, he's a powerful guy who just who just sat most of his career and now he's looking to play or if he's contributed. I I, I truly don't know. So uh, can you kind of fill us in on what, you know, what kind of transfer is he and uh, thoughts on him coming in? Yeah, so I, I also don't know a whole lot about Carpenter. He is on campus right now. I know that his speed is legit. Like he has track time that, you know, backs up what you see on film. Um, so he's really explosive. He was at Colorado. I think that he was really on special teams. Um, so I don't know how involved he was like in their core offense. Um, so I think it's a bit of homesickness too. I think you want to be closer to home. So I think we'll see. I, th- I think it's a flyer take. I think with his speed, you know, you, you'll always take a guy with a kind of speed mm-hmm. on the offense and just see what you can get out of him. Um, you just say doesn't have a whole lot at a slot receiver position. You know, they play Joshua Cephas there. Who's not your traditional slot receiver. You know, he doesn't have that kind of breakaway speed. So we'll see what happens to Carpenter. I, I'd love to see him on kick off a punt return too. I mm-hmm. think he'd be a, a game changer there. For sure. And I apologies. I skipped over DeAndre Marshall, another San Antonian coming out of Central Catholic. And yeah, so kind of thoughts on that. Yeah. So he also played with with Ben Rios. I, I think they kind of need to go in different directions as far as their body go. Like I think Rios needs to buff up a little bit and Marshall probably needs to cut a little bit of weight. Uh, Cause he does look a little bit slow on, you know, with his steps um, on his film. Uh, so he actually filled in for Rios at the all American bowl after Rios tested positive. Uh, and, you know, Marshall definitely had a hard time competing with some of the five star, star five star talent that was there. He was in some viral clips. Um, so it'd be cool to see him use that as motivation as he goes into his collegiate career and try to, you know, bounce back from that because he was getting clowned on a bit. So yeah. I, I think that was good, a good experience for him to, to see like what the college level is going to be like and, you know, how much he has to work on. For sure. All right. Last or second to last, but Payne Hibbert coming out of Northwestern. Mm-hmm. And again, I mean, is he someone that just didn't really play and he's coming to try to play or, or did, did he, did he, get any significant playing time at Northwestern, do you know? Yeah, as far as I know, he never really saw the field at Northwestern. Uh, so that's definitely a concern. I think you just say it's probably still looking for that plug and play off the tackle. I think Hibbert is going to provide depth, and he'll probably get depth at that because, you know, he's an older guy. He's played in the Big Ten, and he kind of knows the ropes by now. 
Um, but the fact that he wasn't able to see the field in Northwestern, it has me, you know, a little bit skeptical that he, he would step in right away and, and be a major contributor. That does happen. Like you've seen it happen at UTSA before. Um, but again, I think UTSA should be able to get another off the tackle to come in because they could probably use two of them. All right. And last but not least, uh, Southern Florida transfer, Jared Sackett. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. an interesting one. So Sackett was a two-time <laughs> All-American at UTSA. And then he transferred to Arkansas. And then he transferred to South Florida. And then he lost his starting job at South Florida, came back to UTSA. That so is he, something. He's had quite the story for sure. He was So is there any sit out there. year here or how many years does he have left? Like well, how does that So I know he's working on his MBA, so he should be like a grad student. So I think like even after you use your initial year, I think you can still do the grad student instant transfer as well. So no, he's he's eligible to play this year. Somehow some way. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Man. I, we got to get their, their lawyers on call, man. They're they're doing the most. You guys are compliance, man. They're they're pulling through yeah. for sure. No joke. No. Um, all right. So so kind of following up here, do you happen to know, do you guys have any scholarships left? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. So there's actually one guy that signed already that we didn't mention, mention and that's uh, Martavius French. Okay. Um, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he just signed like last week, I think. Out of, out of Hutchinson? Story. Yeah, yeah. So he, he uh, transferred in from Hutchinson as well, but he was at Tennessee before that, and uh, he had a run-in with the law for, you know, some um, – intrapreneurial activity sure uh, that the state of Tennessee you know frowns upon yeah uh, so definitely a second chance opportunity for him of course those situations you never really know how they're going to turn out you know was it just a mistake that they're going to grow out of and yeah and contribute or, or you know is it really a bad apple so mm -hmm. you know I think we'll see I think UTSA is in a place that they don't need to like stretch on mm -hmm. on behavioral risk like that um, so I guess that remains to be seen but obviously mm -hmm. you know a former four-star SEC mm -hmm. linebacker yeah worth the risk right Oh yeah, for sure. And he's a hustler. Yeah. So what, you know, <laughs> right, exactly. he's a, he's a fan of the mean green, but anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you happen to know how many scholarships are left? Uh, I want to say three or four. I'm okay, not three sure. Or four, and, three or four. Know, that math always gets a little shaky as, as yeah. guys, you know, come and go. And especially yeah. with the new rule that you can get a scholarship back when they leave in the portal. Yeah. Um, but I think they'll probably, like I said, try to get another off the tackle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then probably a, a real standout defensive back, Mm -hmm. probably a safety um that so that was one of the negatives for this class is mm -hmm. as, as good as it was for UTSA they did lose a couple of guys late 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 in the process and one mm -hmm. of them was uh Ahmad Moses who signed with SMU mm -hmm. that was like a shocking flip on mm -hmm. signing day uh he was gonna be one of the highest rated recruits in program history and he flipped to a future conference rival so that's mm -hmm. de definitely leaves a a bitter taste in the mouth and I don't think UTSA was Expect, expecting that so I think that's one of the spots that they're going to look to, to the transfer portal to get some instant contribution at Okay, so you said three, and you mentioned tackle and maybe safety, and maybe that last one just kind of play by ear, right? Best available, yeah. Yeah, best available. So if some schools, I've speculation, I'm kind of speaking from not factual, or kind of I've heard or taken the approach of, okay, so maybe some of these guys won't make the one or two deep or whatever spot that they hope to make in the spring. Mm -hmm. They'll hit the portal after the spring, and some of these G5 schools might be able to scoop some kids up who mm – -hmm if they would have offered scholarships or they wouldn't have the opportunity if I'm making sense there. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Um, let me ask you something. So Frank Harris, right? I mean, he's, I'm assuming he's loved by all by UTSA, you know, fans. I, I mean, even as a North Texas fan, he's hard not to like, he just seems like a, just a, yeah. I, I mean, I've said it before, but really it just seems like a, just a stand up guy. Mm -hmm. And Again, hard to hate, and you know, I find myself kind of rooting for him, you know, yeah. uh, and when he's not playing us. But anyway, let me ask you this: If Hudson Card doesn't get the spot he wants, and he hits the portal, would you want UTSA to go after him and him essentially put Frank? They would put because I don't think Hudson Card would transfer to ride the bench somewhere else. I don't yeah. think. I think if he transferred, it's going to be somewhere that like, hey, come in, we'll get you going. That, you know, essentially, kind of give you the job without giving you the job. Kind of talk. Mm -hmm. Would you sacrifice Harris's last year to get a Hudson Card type of guy that has you know, I think Hudson Card has at least three years, like yeah. next yeah. year and two more at least. So, what, what do you have any thoughts on that? If that was to ever hypothetically become available, well, first off, I, I love these type of hypotheticals. Yeah. Like this is this is what I like to sit around the fire and chat. Yeah, my for about, sure. Yeah. Um, I th I think specifically for Frank Harris, 
I'd have to say no. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. But one of the main ones is that he's like a, the local like golden child. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's got those really strong connections to San Antonio. You know, all, all the youth players here know him and love him. All the mm-hmm. high school coaches know him and love him. Um, so I think you got to make sure that you take care of the local guys and not try mm-hmm. to push them out the door. Like, I think that's what happened with uh, Grant Wells and Marshall. It kind of seemed like they were kind of fishing around for another transfer to come in and take his job. So he just said, okay, peace. Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. go to Virginia Tech. So mm-hmm. you got to be, like, really careful with those situations. Um, yeah. But I think that Frank is, is so good that, like, there's no need to take that risk because mm-hmm. he's not going to be the reason why UTSA doesn't win a game this mm-hmm. year, you know. I agree wholeheartedly. He's he's super good. But the years that you would get yeah, with him. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, okay, take emotions out of it. Let's yeah. say, okay, take emotions. Because I, and I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. I, and maybe I'm just trying to stir the pot. I don't know. But let's say we're playing NCAA. So yeah. they're just, they're, there's no emotions. There's no youth football league. <laughs> like, it's just numbers and data. Mm-hmm. Do you take Hudson Card if he's available? Man, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> you know you would. I, I don't know. know. I don't know because, I, like, like Frank Harris has already won a championship. He's, he's, the so he's the man. Harris is the man. He's the man. Finally, has one year left. Yeah. Well, but, actually, Frank has. He technically has two years left. Oh no, 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 no! He's got to go, man. We got to get him out the door. I don't. I don't think he's going to use that last year. He's got I, to go. He technically has another year because he got yeah. hurt, right? Yeah. He has medical yeah. red shirt and regular red shirt, Gosh. and he had a COVID year. He's going to be like Austin Ani. I know it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, At least Austin out. was like play, playing minor league baseball or whatever. Frank Dude. is just like you know getting a knee repair, yeah. Knee repair, you know. Golly, I um, didn't know he had. I thought last year was our next. I thought the twenty two season was it for him. My gosh, it, well, it, probably, it probably still will be. Yeah. But- but will it be like if y'all are like at the contenders again, like, yeah. you know, maybe you win it, maybe you don't, but you're up there in contention and he can come back for one more year and be the guy. They play in the American why not? Too. Why yeah. not? Like, yeah. really, why not? Like, what are you, what, what are you missing out on? Like, mm-hmm. you know, unless he's, unless he's going to try for the NFL, you know, not saying he, he should or shouldn't, but in, if he's just going to go into adult world, like, why not just be the quarterback, you know, for one yeah. more year, not, one more, totally, not man, even a year, totally. just like a season, but I hope he doesn't, but. I think it would be cool for y'all if he did. Yeah. But well, all right, Jared. Uh, I, I I know I said we were gonna try to make this 15 minutes, and here we are going on 40. I'm but, sorry. Uh, I, no, tried. I really tried. I was really trying to go fire. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. But anything else we need to talk on before we hop off here? No, man. I, I have taken up too much of your time already. But thanks for having me on. As always, I, I hope your listeners will continue to check out our our YouTube channel, uh, which we, we have a, a major. You guys know that I, I talk too much. So we have a video coming out probably next week. That's going to be an hour and 30 minutes long. Oh, there you go. We started doing an award ceremony for UTSA. So be on the lookout for that on our YouTube Oh, that's channel. fun. I may have to I may have to copycat that for UNT yeah, after yeah, I watch that. That, a, that sounds fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, Jared. Thanks for hopping on. Take care, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, brother.